Welcome to part two in our series on DAC VR deals. In this session, we're going to talk about setting up an example VR deal and some of the uh, options that are involved in that and what they actually do. So let's bring up our session screen and take a look at things. So what I'm going to do is take uh, option one from the menu. I'm going to press F10 to add a new deal. It defaults when it does that. It assigns the next available deal number up. Now, you can change this if you want to have involve some uh, numbering schemes, and it will take what you enter there, but most people um, just let it default to the next incremental number unless they have some kind of scheme that means something to them internally. It does ask for a vendor number. Uh, the vendor number, as I mentioned in the first session, um, is not a hard and fast rule. You can mix and match items from other vendors. Um, but it started off it, its life uh, being for a single vendor, and then we relax those rules. So I'm going to press F4 to search for a vendor. I'm going to grab Nestle. If you know the vendor number, obviously you could just key it in. So that brings me to the screen where you begin to set things up. So if you remember from our list before, the different deal types. So we're going to talk about deal types. Right now, everything's wide open, and once you select a deal type, some of these fields are going to become hidden fields, but uh, you can give the uh, VR deal a description, a start and end date. Uh, you can tell it when it's tracking whether to ignore credits or not, so it'd just be tracking the sales alone. You can restrict to a particular unit of measure, which is a, not as commonly used, but is a, another option in there. Uh, it might be a sense off deal. It might be a fixed price, so that's what those things, so deal price would be a fixed price, cents off would be a cents off value, like 50 cents off. Uh, you also have these distributor values in here, so maybe you're giving the retailer 50 cents off, and you're also getting bill back money or being reimbursed from the supplier uh, a, a certain amount. So it might be 50 cents off to the retailer, maybe you're getting 75 cents off uh, or back to you whatever that happens to be, or it could be a percentage back to you as the distributor. Uh, you can also do retailer percentages where it's uh, calculating the percentage either for rebate or for off invoice, and how you want it to affect the cost. You want it to affect the base cost, the net cost, all costs, or don't affect the cost at all. And then a little uh, change tracking stuff. So let's just grab an example here. I'm going to press F4 up here to choose a type because... That's always there for you to use. And I'm going to use the most common type, which is a B type, a billing type. And you can see that a couple of our fields got hidden down here, and now we have a place to enter some scenes. So these are required fields here. You must have a description, must have a start date, must have an end date, uh, and you must tell it how you want to affect the cost. Uh, so let's just set that up. So let's say... Uh, I'm gonna, if I can type a little bit better, <laughs> we'll see if we can get that working a little better. And I'm gonna put a start date in there. And so since this is um, 2020 still, I'm gonna start it for the month of October and run it out through halfway through November as my start dates. And I'm gonna say it's a B type, so my only choices are sense off to the retailer, and do do I, as the distributor, get any kind of money back on that uh, expected? So in my example here, I'll, I'll do 50 cents. And we'll optimistically say uh, we're actually going to get 51 cents back. Um, hopefully it might be more than that. Generally, I think a lot of times it's just a wash, uh, if anything. And I'm going to tell it this time just to... X not affect the cost at all, but if I said base, then it would uh, ask me to do a sense off on the base and sense off on the net if I'm using net or all requires both of those, but we'll just keep this guy real simple. We'll put an X in here. And so it's just letting me know, okay, so deal types if some entries may change. It's just a little heads up in case you come back in and edit the header later on and start to change deal types, which you can do. You need to understand what will happen when you do that. Also, one important thing is a default property in here that says add on to an existing allowance. And basically what that does is when it's a sense off allowance, you have the uh, option to stack 
deals on top of each other. So they might get 50 cents off from one deal and an additional 10 cents off on another deal. And if both deals say stacking is allowed, then it the the actual allowance will be the aggregate total of those cents off amounts. I'm going to press enter. My confirm prop comes up. I'm going to press enter again. So we've defined a header. We've done that. Now you can add items in one by one. You have some default properties up here. Remember, this is our cents off to the retailer. This is our distributor incentive. So as you key things item by item, you can change these properties and have it automatically populate. If you don't, it's going to default to what the, uh, the header contains in it. So you can do it item by item, and you can also enroll items in bulk. And so I want to show you what that screen looks like. So I'm going to press F5, and that gives us some options here to enroll items within the deal. And so it explains what's going on. It gives some information about the deal you're doing, uh, about to do it with. And you can en enroll things, a complete category, a complete sales class, a complete product class. It defaults to this vendor only. So here I have it set up under Nestle. So if I leave that as a Y and I say category five, for instance, for grocery or candy or, or whatever that category happens to be, then it will get everything out of category five that belongs to this vendor. That's the default setting in here. So let's just, uh, and if you don't identify anything, it will be everything from that vendor, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say F10, enroll qualified items. And I'm going to say, Yes, I want to do that. If this is a little warning, you're about to grab a bunch of things. Uh, and I'm going to say, yes, I do want to grab everything in here. And I'm going to confirm that. And then it's populated things that I have in my sample system as being attributed to Nestle. Now, obviously, there'll be some things in here that are not Nestle items. This is just a test example data. So it's that quick to pull things in. I want to show you one other thing that you can do is if every everything at the end of the day and the processing, the details are everything. The header that I showed you when we first set things up, that becomes a set of default properties. But in real practice, when things are running, each detail controls its own um, level of, uh, of effect in the system. So I'm going to edit this uh, Spree Chew Mixed Berry with a 2. I'm going to show you a couple of things you can do. If I wanted to unlock the dates, I might make this particular thing operate for a different date range. And, I, and maybe my criteria in here, my sense off amount, since this is a B type, might be different. So maybe on this item, I get, I'm giving 60 cents off to the retailer. And as a distributor, um, let's just say, Maybe I get a dollar off. So something like that. I pressed enter. My confirm prompt has come up, but I don't really want to confirm yet because I want to show you the dates while we're in here. Look at this. So I'm going to press F15, which is a shift F3 on your keyboard. That opens up these date fields for entry. So now I can say, you know, this one here doesn't run the full term of the deal. This one is only in play, let's say... Um, from the 1st of October through the 31st of October, just to make a nice clean example. So I made that change. I'm going to press enter. I'm going to confirm. And now we should see in here my spree item it has different amounts that this little red block with the D and the exclamation point is an indicator that this guy has a different date range involved in it. So I can do that. So you can get down to that level of detail. This is just one type. There are multiple types in there. Every one of them, the details rule the world. The header is just basically for default information, but you can, you can get very creative and you can add other items into this that are not from Nestle or, you know, you can mix and match the items. It really doesn't care about the vendor. Now, later on, when we talk about in a future session about exporting to vendor billing to get bill back money, things of that nature. If you have mixed deals, then it will break those apart by the vendor that are involved and create multiple invoices for each respective vendor. So that is all 
part and parcel of this whole thing. But what I want to do just to kind of wind this session up is I'm going to press F3. So what we did, we created a, a deal from scratch. We populated it with some items. We manipulated some items. Also, if there's an item in here that you don't like, you can always boop, delete. So you can pull in a, a batch of items and then you can, as you need, remove the ones that are not really applicable. So you can go about this a different number of ways. You can plug items in one by one. You can grab a bulk of them. You can delete the ones that don't fit. So a lot of different ways to, uh, to go through things. But when I press F3, since I'm in add mode, you'll see something else come in. So, all right, we, this, since this is a billing side deal, it's a buy down, now we have to tell the system who does it apply to? So I want to show you that screen, and that will be the end of this session. So I'm going to say, yes, I do want to enroll right now. You can go back and amend enrollments, obviously, after the fact, and we will talk about that in a another session, but take yes. All right, and so then it pops up a dialogue. It says, all right, here's your deal. Here's the uh, description of it. Now, who do you want to enroll? And so I could... And these are all ands, so I could say if you belong to this billing matrix and you're this corporate and you're this account type. And if, if it's blank, it just doesn't look at that particular rule. I could do it by jurisdiction. For people in a multi-warehouse environment, you can do it by branch or, or warehouse if you want to think of it that way. You can set up item collections and store those and enroll by item collection. There's a lot of different things you can do here. Or if it, And if you want to just say this applies to everybody, I don't care then F17 is a global enrollment saying all customers qualify. I'm going to do a enrollment by, let's pick a state for instance. So the, the example here might be, I have a deal, it applies to people in the state of uh, Michigan, but not in the state of Ohio or some you know uh, nearby state that you also service. So you can do those types of things. So it, there's a lot of a lot of different nuances you can plug in once you understand the elements. So I'm going to say my state is going to be Florida, my Florida customers, and you can also exclude a whole set by putting exclude. So, so by default, this is including people, enrolling them in the deal. But you can also use this tool to come back and exclude sets of customers. We're going to enroll the folks in Florida if we have any in this test system. So I'm going to press F10. And it's asked me, should new customers automatically be rolled based on these scopes? And because I indicated Florida, if I say yes here, then if I add a new customer and they are in the state of Florida, if I add them tomorrow, then during the end of day, it's going to say, hey, Florida customers are supposed to be enrolling this. You've just added a new Florida customer. Make sure that that customer is part of that puzzle, you know, or is enrolled in it. So that's how that works. And all of these scopes function that way. So what that allows you to do is enroll things by a subset of your customers. And then as if a new customer gets added into that subset, they become enrolled automatically. So I'm going to press, say yes to that question and press enter. And now I have um, my deal set up out here. And this red is indicating there are no customers enrolled. And so let's see what's going on there. I'm going to do an E beside it to check enrollment. Anytime you see something red here, that means there are custom, there are no customers enrolled in the selling side. So let's just see if maybe the screen didn't refresh. So let's just check and see what we've got. And I have nobody. So I had no Florida customers enrolled in that. So that, that's a good example here. So let's just take another bite of the cherry. So I'm going to run the enrollment tool from here to show how that works. And this time I'm going to say... Enroll people in this. Let's just try Louisiana for fun. I'm going to press F10. Automatically want to enroll. Yes, I do. And now for this particular deal, 135, I've enrolled all these customers. So that's how the enrollment works. When you're in ad mode or after the fact, you can come back in and do an E beside the deal to do that. Let me F3 exit. So that's what an E does. And if I refresh this screen now, I'll just um, I'll just key a vendor that's nonsensical, and now you see the red has disappeared because now there are 
customers enrolled in that. So if I do an E beside it, these are the customers enrolled explicitly based off of the state. If we add more customers into that state, they will become enrolled. So here we're restricting to deal 135 in that particular vendor, just to sort of reinforce that notion. So that's what the enrollment does. And there are a couple other handy, handy things in here. For instance, the copy. You can, to edit, you go back in. You're back in looking at items in there. If I do a Z to zoom, I can zoom back into the header and make some changes. And we will look at that in, in a, another session. I can, uh, in, customer loyalty is a, a separate module in DAC, but you can do tracking and have it feed, you know, where it's tracking, uh, you know, must buy five sandwiches, must buy three cookies of these particular SKUs and so forth and qualify. That's a whole other level of detail on tracking that that, a particular module supports. Um, and then the enrollment we looked at. I just wanted to show you this copy thing real quick. Uh, if I wanted to copy a deal, say for instance, I wanted to run something along and it ran, we know this one we set up to run from um, October 1st through um, uh, <laughs> through the through uh, November the 15th, excuse me. Uh, but you can copy a whole deal and give it a new start and end date, and then you can say, if just copy the customers that are already enrolled, handle that for me. And uh, so you can do some things, so you, and you can give it a new start and end range. So if I wanted to, maybe this thing was set to expire on the 15th of November, and then the vendor came back and said, well, we're going to run it again in the month of December. Rather than set everything up, the easiest thing to do would be to copy it, put a new start and end date in there. It's going to copy the enrollment. The old deal, 135, is going to continue to track, but now you'll have a new deal, 136, to do that. So that's how that would work. So the copy is is a very handy way to do some things. So having said that, that brings us to the end of part two. I hope you'll stay tuned uh, for part three. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into the uh, layers of the onion. Thanks.